over, there was a, a lion insignia on the table because it was a piece of, of furniture. It was one of the coolest guitars I've ever seen. Of course, that was not for sale. And he plugged it in. He was out there jamming. But think about it. He carved that out of a table. That's just a, a, a solid slab of wood, of pine or whatever, in the shape of a Telecaster. And then he added in artificial relicking in himself and tarnished the hardware himself. Very, very cool instrument. Why do I say this? Because he was able, this guy who was not a world a recognized guitar technician or luthier, he was able to make a solid body electric guitar himself because he was handy. But it would have been a lot more effort and work for him to make, a, or maybe an impossibility for him to design an acoustic from ground up uh, with the same quality. Because it's just, it's not the same. You can't carve an acoustic out of a table. And so that's some food for thought to where why this is all so expensive in other directions. And I, I think of it in terms of brackets and so forth. As I told you guys, I started out as an adult. And I was already full-time employment at that time. And everything was to where I just wanted a high quality instrument. And some people might not like this talk about price, so that's what I might get into and get it out of the way. Because there's different levels of investment. If you go to, say, if you go down the electric route, say you want to spend, say, 500. That's your max. I want 500 for an electric. Then you'd be in the in the realm of Squire. And if you wanted to get the most inexpensive acoustic of quality of reasonable quality playability, because I'll give I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you an unbiased suggestion. Because I'm different than a lot of my viewers. And I say I say I don't like Taylor, I don't like this. Let me give you an unbiased. The guitar I always see frequently, the big baby Taylor, that's an inexpensive instrument, kind of reasonable. It's, a, it's a somewhat of an investment, but it's not anything crazy. That would be something to check out. And when I was dealing on Facebook around 2018 or 19, I was selling a lot of things, and one guy gave me this Yamaha guitar. And that was junk, but it wasn't because Yamaha is a bad brand. It was just the individual example. It was not well, well kept. So you could also look into Yamaha acoustic guitar. You know, and it's not going to be the most mind-boggling sound an individual's ever heard. And it's not going to be something that is incredibly unique, and everyone loses it over it. But it will be something to learn on. Now, I started out on the electric guitar, and there was be certain benefits to that, especially when I first started. One is that I played practiced, unplugged, nice and quietly. So it was quieter than this, much quieter. If someone in the next room could hear that. I found that a great understated benefit of playing the electric guitar, practicing on it, was because it kind of evens out when you're in a, a small, um, small beginner range of, of price negotiation. It evens out because of this. With the electric guitar, yes, you can play unplugged, you can practice, you can do, you can play without disturbing anyone while still hearing yourself perfectly, being able to assess everything, it's, it's kind of unique. But then when you need to finally play and truly get the value out of the instrument, you need what? Write it down below. You need an amplifier. And the amplifier is, is going to be a significant price. And this is why I think that it almost balances out. The acoustic guitar requires nothing, generally. But the electric needs the amp, but the acoustics are generally 